Let's bring in Nate Mollering now. He's a community outreach coordinator for Fort Wayne Recovery in Indiana and a recovering fentanyl addict. Thank you so much for joining us and telling your story. It's so important for people to hear. First of all, how did your addiction come about? Well, my addiction started when I was a young man. Um, as many people with substance use disorder feel, I felt different than everybody else around me. I always say I felt like I was an alien dropped off on this planet and everybody else around me, they were earthlings and they could interact with each other. I had social anxiety, but as a young man, I didn't have the language to tell people how I felt, especially the adults in my life, so I began to act out. And as a young man, they diagnosed me with attention deficit disorder, which I actually do not have and they placed me on Adderall, which is an amphetamine. I'm sure you've heard of methamphetamine. And when you have attention deficit, dis dis attention deficit disorder, um, it works very well for you, but I did not. So it opened the door to experimentation for me. You know, for years we heard, uh, don't do drugs, they're bad for you, you'll die if you do drugs. Well then, you know, I had a, uh, a physician prescribing me drugs and I thought it was a solution to all my problems. So fast forward a little bit, I start playing high school football. I had three shoulder surgeries. This was back in the early 2000s. So they started prescribing me Percocet, and that is when everything really changed. You know, that was back when Purdue Pharma was like, you know, we're gonna cure the world's pain. You know, pain's the fifth vital sign. Give them, if you shouldn't be in pain. So I was prescribed opiates, and we now know that it works better on emotional and mental pain than it even does physical pain, especially when you have a young developing brain. So that just opened the door further, and I ended up going to college on a football scholarship where I injured my back and again was given more pain pills. And around the same time, they shut down a lot of the pill mills that were distributing uh, large amounts of uh, prescription pain pills to people for cash, for other favors. There was one practice in my home state of Indiana that they estimate created over 10,000 opiate addicts alone. So when they shut that off, the Mexican drug cartels decided to bring in heroin, which was much cheaper. Uh, pills were going for about a dollar per milligram. So if you're taking two Oxy 80s a day, that's $160 a day. That's a hard habit to, to break. And a gram of heroin was about $50, which is about 10 uh, hits of heroin. So then they started to introduce fentanyl, which as they referred to correctly in the beginning, uh, this is a weapon of mass destruction. It's killed many people. It's killed many of my friends. It almost killed me. Um, they started to cut it in the drug supply. And when that ended up happening, long story short, I was homeless. I was strung out. You know, a lot of people say, Nate, you don't look like a person with substance use disorder, but I am. I am the face of people who struggle. Anybody can struggle. So I ended up overdosing twice in 24 hours. Wow. Um, I had had multiple overdoses or poisonings, as many people refer them to now. Uh, so I had multiple poisonings before that, but these were really close together. And I had a first responder who took pity on me. He, he empathized with me. He showed me compassion and love, uh, which is something we're not always used to, but the man decided he was gonna take a different approach and he sent me to drug and alcohol treatment. He just sat down next to me, and this man is a veteran of the force. He was special operations in the Air Force. He was a SWAT team sniper. His name is Mark Gerardo with the Foreign Police Department. And he just told me, he said, I wanna help you. you. You have value, you matter. And so I went to treatment, and now I work for those people today at Allendale Treatment and Fort Wayne Recovery. Wow, it's an amazing, remarkable story, and we are so glad you are here, Nate, uh, to tell this story. And as you were speaking, I think so many of us see those pictures and we see this healthy athlete and we think there's no way this is somebody who's battling that level of addiction that could possibly take your life. You mentioned it took others around you. You were in that blue football uniform. Uh, you said that was taken from college right before you had to leave because of this heroin addiction. You also point out uh, that you don't have a lot of pictures to share with us. We're sharing the ones you do because you had to sell your phone for drugs, Nate. And then you credit it as you just mentioned that officer. Um, he's pictured, uh, there's a picture of you with him. The officer you say saved your life. He decided to send you to rehab rather than jail. Obviously that is key to how this story ends and, and how your life began after that, Nate. It was huge in that moment to have him believe in me. Um, and that's why I'm a huge advocate for people getting help. And uh, a lot of lawmakers are starting to see that. And so are police officers. I work hand in hand with the local unit in Fort Wayne uh, called the Hope and Recovery Team that goes out with two non-uniform detectives and two social workers. And we follow up with people who have had fentanyl poisonings or other drug overdoses recently. And we try to get them into treatment. Um, and so I was one of the first people that Fort Wayne Police Department sent to treatment. And I came back and I just had a passion to work with others then. You know, they, I'm so grateful and I've always been taught that gratitude is action. Um, and I also wanna say that I really appreciate um, 
Congressman Jim Banks, who is the chairman of the roundtable that we had yesterday, and I'm so proud for him to be my representative and my, my home district leading the charge in this fight. It's just I, so grateful. We're grateful for you telling your story. Uh, you could be changing someone's life who's listening to this right now, and we have all know that we've got a huge problem. We've got to deal with scary time to be a parent, a teenager in this country with fentanyl pouring over our border. We've been showing the numbers while you spoke, Nate. Thank you very much for joining us. Our best to you. Thank you so much.